Toxidromes are difficult, but this one should not be missed. Today we're going to be talking about organophosphate poisoning. We're going to be discussing what it is, how do you diagnose it, and how do you treat it. So organophosphate poisoning is when you are poisoned by organophosphates. It is a poison that is created to kill insects and kill bugs that are eating up crops. So it's used in farming industries mainly. The poison can be intentional or accidental. Unfortunately, it is something that people can do intentionally. So what is organophosphate or how does this affect the body? When you have organophosphate poisoning, you have a block of your acetylcholine uptake. So the acetylcholine esterase, which then breaks up your acetylcholine in your neuromuscular junction, like this diagram, I'm sure we all remember from school. Acetylcholine is a neuromuscular transmitter. And so that helps to activate muscles across the neuromuscular junction. And so the organophosphate poisoning causes that cholinergic effect that then slows all that down and slows the uptake or the breakdown of the acetylcholine. How do we fix a cholinergic problem? We give an anticholinergic, such as atropine. What are the signs and symptoms of organophosphate poisoning? Well, liquid just starts coming out of every little hole, neck and cranny. There is an acronym called SLUDGE. So S is for salivation, L is for lacrimation, U is for urination, D defecation, G is for the GI symptoms, they have bowel movements, they have all the GI stuff, and E is for emesis, so there's vomiting and all those terrible things. You're also going to see bradycardias and hypertension. How do we treat a organophosphate poisoning? Well, the first thing that people seriously do forget about is decontamination said that strange because it is very important. If you're not going to decontaminate, you must realize that this is a poisoning and it could very well be on the patient and it's now on you. We are not very good at being aware of these things. So remember, whenever you have some sort of poisoning or whenever you have a toxidrome that you're dealing with, remember that it could also be affecting you. So we treat organophosphate poisoning with another ABC. So the first A is atropine. We're going to be giving 0.02 milligrams per kilogram bolus and we can double that every five minutes so some people just say start with two and then give four and give eight and give 16 and give 32. my well, math isn't that good i can't keep going and you're going to give that until you see atropinization and that will happen when your pupils go from being very small to very big the b stands for benzos uh, they might be agitated they might be having seizures the benzo whether you're using lorazepam diazepam midazolam whatever you have will be the right drug as long as it's a benzo. And then the C is for activated charcoal. The charcoal is for the C acronyms. And so you're gonna give charcoal if the medication was taken orally or if the organophosphate poisoning was eaten within the last hour or two, then activated charcoal can be given. I transported a, must've been an eight-year-old kid who had organophosphate poisoning. He was unconscious on a ventilator and all we were giving him was atropine. He was completely GCS3. What had happened that his mom had gone and bought some cheaper cuts of meat and while she was preparing it she wasn't feeling very well and as the family ate it they all started feeling unwell. The mother unfortunately did not make it but the rest of the family was in ICU for a couple of days. It's important to note that symptoms can take hours or minutes to hours to develop and that these symptoms can last for days to weeks. So really guys when it comes to organophosphate poisoning remember that we need to decontaminate. We can use sludge as the acronym to remember what kind of symptoms we're looking for and remember decontamination. Then it's your atropine, your benzos and your charcoal.